Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, today I would like to continue talking about magnetic properties of electric current. Before we were talking about um, very, very long, thin, straight line electric current and magnetic field around it. Remember? So if this is the current, magnetic field lines are around it. Now, um, today we'll continue talking about this, um, but um, today it will be on a little bit more fundamental and slightly more mathematical level, um, but it will allow to establish certain um, formula, if you wish, or law. Um, which is in the foundation of whatever I was talking about, uh, straight line current. And I will use it for determining the magnetic field in the center of a electric current in a loop. So that's what today's, uh, um, our, our, our uh, research will be directed to. Electric current in a loop, that's our goal. But again, in the, in the beginning, I will talk about more fundamental uh, law, which has actually the name, um, uh, kind of a difficult to pronounce French uh, physicist, uh, Bu and Savar actually came up with this. So there is a differential form and there is an integral form, and I will talk about both of these. So that's what the program for today. Now, this lecture is part of the whole course called Physics for Teens, and I do recommend you to take the whole course. Um, it's presented on unizor.com website. Uh, if you found this lecture somewhere on YouTube um, using some search uh, mechanisms, uh, I do suggest you to go to the website unizor.com because it's part of the course. This lecture is part of the course. Every lecture has very detailed textual notes which basically can serve as a textbook. Um, there are certain problems which uh, I'm solving uh, in the course of this material. Um, there are exams for those who would like to challenge um, themselves. And uh, everything on unizor.com is free. There are no strings attached. You don't even have to log in. All right, so. Um, let's start from something which is more, I would say, fundamental um, qualities. Um, we live in a three-dimensional world, and any field we were dealing with before, um, they were usually, well, at least we started uh, talking about all these fields, like gravitational field or, or electrostatic field, in their simplest form, the source of these fields were a point. So a point charge or point mass or mass point, whatever. Um, and the field around uh, these point charges or point masses were spherical for obvious reason. It's a three-dimensional, so we have a point as a source, so the field is spreading uh, its influence, if you wish, um, in all different directions in three-dimensional uh, space. Which means that at any given time the influence of that field is spread around a sphere around the point which is the source. Which means, again, that the influence of that particular source of the field is spread around the surface of that sphere. And the surface of the sphere is 4 pi r square, where r is obviously the radius. Now, that's very important because r square is in the denominator of all the laws which we were talking about before. Uh, like gravitational f uh, field, that's the the law uh, discovered by Newton. For electrostatic field, we also had the same thing. The force of the field is always inversely proportional to 
r square. And again, it's kind of more inversely proportional to 4 pi r square, but 4 pi is just a uh, multiplier and it all depends on the units of measurement. But the most important is dependency on um, 1 over r square. Now, what do we have with magnetic field? Well, we kind of think that it must be something similar to this. And in a way, it is. However, there is a very important complication with magnetic fields. You cannot really consider the source of magnetic field as a point. It's always... Um, it, it always has a direction, so it's not just a point, it, it's a point with a direction. Now, what I mean is, if you have a permanent magnet, it has north and south poles, right? However small you make this magnetic, uh, th this permanent magnet, it will still have a direction. And direction is important, and I will show you why. So it's not just the point. Now, if you have an electric current as a source of the field, and the field is something like this, around it, again, it's also direction. There is always direction of the current. Right. However small the piece of the wire is, it still has a direction. And it means it has certain different positions and depending on the position of this very, very small piece of wire, however small, infinitesimally small, no matter what it is, but there is still a dependency on the position relative to the point where we are measuring our the strength of the magnetic field, which is produced by this however small piece of wire. So that's very important. And right now, I would like to talk about this particular dependency on the um, direction and how to take it into account. For instance, we have a wire, and we are talking about a um, magnetic field uh, around the electric current, so we need a wire. And uh, let's say this is direction of the current. It's a direct current. Now, we are not actually interested in the whole magnetic field produced by the current. We are interested only in one particular segment. Very small one. Well, infinitesimally small one, for obvious reasons. Um, and I'm interested in the magnetic field which is produced only by this particular piece of wire somewhere at point P. Now, let's think about it. I think there is a very important analogy. If you take, for instance, the sun rays, they're coming to the Earth. Why do we have such a cold climate on the poles and very hot actually somewhere near equator? Well, because the axis uh, of Earth is at angle to Sun. If this is the Sun. So what happens is here the rays are perpendicular to the surface. Here the same rays, basically, right? Um, the Earth is much is much bigger than uh, the Sun is much bigger than Earth, so basically it's exactly the same rays. However, it's cold here. Why is it cold? Well, because there is an angle on the square surface, on the square meter, let's say, of surface around the pole. You have much narrower. Um, set of rays which are coming to it than here. So what's very important is the angle between the source and this particular surface where the rays are, fo uh, uh, are falling on, right? So the same square meter here, if it's turned in such a way that it's almost like parallel to the sun rays, 
it doesn't have much sun's uh, warmth, right? So that's why it's cold. And here we have perpendicular, so the same square meter here gets much more rays. Now, here we have exactly the same story. If this particular piece of wire is directed perpendicularly to this, So from here, all the influence are coming ba basically the same as if it's really coming only from this length. So if this particular length is equal to ds, differential of the length, s is the length, right? Um, so it's actually the, the active piece of this, which uh, influence whatever the position, uh, whatever the position we are considering, it's only this piece. So only if perpendicular, and this is also perpendicular, obviously. Let's call it C. So it's actually A B influence is exactly the same as A C influence to this point P. And the further p is uh, up on this particular picture, the narrower will be this segment AC. So let's call it effective length. So if length of this is um, AB is DS, then the effective length AC is equal to DB times oops, DS ds times times what? What is the length of this? If this is ds, if this is alpha, then this is uh, then this is alpha. So this is ac is ab times sine of alpha, and this is actually the effective length of this particular segment. Now, since we know the length, if you remember we were talking about what is actually the magnetic field produced by straight line, we were talking about um, proportionality. The force should be, should be proportional proportional to um, the electric current, right? Um, and uh, it definitely should be proportional to, the, to, to this length, so let's call it S. Um, what else? It's and obviously it's supposed to be inversely proportional to R square in theory, right? We're talking about the, dif the distance, and this is kind of, we have come up with a philosophical um, understanding that the influence must be inversely proportional to the square of the distance, right? Because we, we are li we're living in a three-dimensional world, and influence of this thing is actually spread around the sphere. So if this is the radius r. That what I can say about the strength of magnetic field at that point, it should be proportional to i, obviously, to the electric current it should be inversely proportional to r square it should be uh, also proportional to the effective lengths now i'm talking about effective lengths which is kind of visible from p so from p the ab segment is visible actually like ac so that's why i have to multiply it by ds and sine alpha. <coughs> so this is, let's put it k, coefficient of proportionality, and that should be the value of um, magnetic 
uh, field uh, intensity at point P. Now, speaking about coefficient K, again, it all depends on the measurement units, and in C, it's uh, mu 0 divided by 4 pi. So we have, in the denominator, we have a sphere, uh, the surface of the sphere, and mu 0 is uh, called, um, how is it called? Um, something related to penetration of the space, basically. Um, permeability, something like this. Kind of difficult word. <laughs> but whatever it is, it's the property of the space, actually. Right? And uh, again, it's uh, in the C unit, that's what it is. And I wanted to present this as a fundamental property of um, um, electromagnetic field produced by a tiny piece of um, wire with certain electric current running through it. Now, why do I need this current piece instead of the whole line? Well, because I would like to actually use it for loop, electric loop, rather than straight line. When we were talking about straight line, we came up with I would say more intuitive formula of magnetic field around the straight line. If I have this as my more fundamental um, property of the electromagnetic field produced by the piece of the current, I can actually come up with certain way to derive the formula which we intuitively produced for um, infinite length straight line current, I can produce it mathematically by integrating this. And maybe we can do it in, as, as a problem solving kind of exercise. But in this particular case, I don't want to use it for the straight line, which will you will see it's a little bit more difficult than for a loop. And I will use it for a loop. Okay, so let's just remember this formula. ds is infinitesimal differential of the length of the wire. i is the current. sine is the angle from this piece relative to direction. Again, direction. Remember, always we have direction. When we have electric current, we have a direction. So between this direction and this direction, we have an angle. So that's what this angle actually is. And uh, r is the distance. Okay, so I will use this formula to derive what's the strength, what's the intensity of magnetic field at the center of the electric current in a loop. So let's just think about this. And instead of this, we will do the loop. plus minus, this is the current of um, uh, electric current running in a loop, and I'm interested in magnetic properties of the space inside at the center. Only at the center, it's simpler. Obviously we can do at any point by integrating everything. It's just more difficult and I would like to concentrate on something simpler because it basically explains everything. I don't want to go into technical details because the technical details for a center are very simple. All right, so let's talk about this. So this is ds. So s is the length. It's from 0 to 2 pi r. r is obviously the distance, the radius of the, of, of the loop. Now, I is fine, we understand, R we understand, DS also we understand, that's this little piece. What's the sign of alpha? Well, let's just think about it. Alpha is an angle between direction of the DS, which is this one, tangential, this is direction of the loop, basically, and the radius to the point where we are measuring, between this and this. 
well, and lo and behold, in case of a loop, it's always 90 degrees, because this is the radius and this is tangential. And the sine of 90 degree is 1. So in our case, the formula for a small, actually I should put db here. It's a differential of, of, of b, it's infinitesimal, because this is differential, so this is differential. So, in my case, db would be equal to mu 0 times i times ds divided by 4 pi r squared, where i is a constant, r is the constant, radius, and the electric current, and basically the variable is s, and this is the differential of s, and if I will integrate this, if I will integrate it from 0 to 2 pi r, this is the length of the whole circle. So this is s is equal to 0, and this is s is increasing, and at this point s is equal to 2 pi r. Well, considering these two points are very close to each other, right? So I have to integrate this. That's more kind of um, habitual way to write, to, to write integral. You have this variable, you have limits of integration. This is the constant, so the constant goes out. And what I have is mu zero i four pi r square integral from two pi r ds. Well, what's integral of ds? Again, if we forgot the calculus, you have to go back to the prerequisite for this physics routine. On the same website, there is a math routine, and there is a very big uh, calculus portion there. So, this is the simplest possible integral, obviously. The integral from, um, uh, from, this, d from this ds is just s, and you have to put all these limits. So, um, the formula, Newton's Leibniz formula, um, you have antiderivative, which is S, and um, you put it in this, uh, at this limit minus this limit. So, 2 pi r uh, uh, to uh, substitute, substitute it to S would be 2 pi r, 0 would be 0, and difference would be 2 pi r. So, it's equal to mu 0 i 2 pi r divided by 4 pi r square equals to mu 0 i uh, divided by 2 r, right? Pi and this, so we have 2 r. So this is the formula for intensity of the magnetic field inside the loop, in the center of the loop. Now, obviously as a separate problem, which we might consider in the future, I don't have to really, um, I don't, I, I, I can actually calculate not only in the center of the loop, but on the axis, on any point um, which is projected into the center of this loop, on a certain distance. And we can do it. Again, it's just simple integration. Um, we can do it at any other point inside the loop, not only in the center. That's a little bit more difficult integration. But again, it's, it's all possible. Everything comes from, uh, from this. From the differential form of this mu sub r law. Um, Okay, so we have come up with this formula, very simple formula. Uh, mu is a constant, I is your current, and R is the radius. So that's the intensity. In Teslas, by the way, in C system of units, uh, it's measured in Teslas. So this is, the answer is in Tesla. So this is in, uh, in, in amperes, and this is obviously meters, and mu zero is the 
perme permeability constant. Okay, now, what if our loop is um, consists not only uh, from from one basic loop but few loops? So we are just let's say we have certain um, I don't know cylinder, and then we are looping the wire around and around and around. Basically, each circle which we are making is an independent loop because the current goes inside this loop and inside that loop and inside that loop, etc., etc. So, obviously, um, the intensity should be added together, and if you have n um, circles of the wire um, making a, a thicker loop, if you wish, then you just have to multiply it by n, where n is the number of loops. So that's a simple thing. Now, what else I did not cover, um, and it's related to this uh, law of uh, BU sub R, I have actually wrote the formula in the following form. ds sine alpha divided by 4 pi r square. Now this is a magnitude of the vector, right? So if you have this ds and this is the p, oops, I said p and row p. This is the angle. Now, this is a magnitude. Now, but we know that intensity is actually a vector. It has magnitude and direction. And we also know from, I don't know, experimental fact, if you wish. I don't think I can explain it right now. But usually, um, you know that if you have um, certain current and certain direction, at that point, the magnetic field produced by moving electrons on this distance is a vector which has this magnitude and direction which is perpendicular to both direction of the current and direction towards um, the point where we are measuring. So these two vectors, vector ds and vector r, are vectors. Now this is the magnitude of um, intensity and what is the direction? Well, let's think about it. Direction is supposed to be perpendicular to this and perpendicular to that. Now these two are lines on the surface of this board. Now if you want to have perpendicular to two lines on, on a plane that's a perpendicular to the whole plane. So it should be perpendicular to the board. So at this point, the direction of magnetic um, intensity force would be perpendicular to my board. And this is obviously the magnitude of this. But if this is true, we can use a very convenient way to represent. If you remember, again, from from the vector algebra, uh, we, uh, we were using something which is called vector product or a cross product. If you have two vectors, A and B, it's the vector which is perpendicular to both, to A and to B, and whose magnitude is equal to magnitude of A times magnitude of B times sine of the angle between them from A to B in this particular case. So, 
we do have basically exactly the same thing here. Let's imagine that you have a unit vector, I'll use lowercase r, unit. It has only one uh, length it is equal to one unit. Then this formula can be expressed as in a vector form. Vector dB is equal to mu zero i vector ds vector product r divided by 4 pi r squared. So r is a unit vector. So when you multiply it by r from the strengths, from the magnitude perspective, you just multiply by 1. But you also multiply by sine between this and this, sine of this alpha. So this basically contains the same information as this. However, why this formula is, well, a little bit better? Because it contains both the magnitude and the direction, because now we know the direction of magnetic intensity field would be perpendicular to ds and this unit vector. And, um, and then there is another representation which personally I don't like. You see, we have to introduce this unit vector, lowercase r. Um, sometimes it's maybe preferable to use the whole vector r. Um, but if we will write r here, well, let me just write it again. dB is equal to mu i ds vector r divided by 4 pi r squared. Now, if I... Oh, sorry. Cross product. Now, if I want to use the original vector r, what happens here? I'm adding a multiplier into this formula, which is equal to the value of r. So I have one r more in the, num uh, in the numerator than I need. So I have to compensate it by putting 3 here instead of 2. So then the magnitude of r would just cancel out and that will have exactly the same thing as here. So r is a unit vector. Uh, uh, capital R is basically the whole vector to the point. So these are equivalent. And uh, this is basically the form which uh, this law of uh, BU sub R actually takes. And again, it's a differential form. You see, we're talking about infinitesimal piece. Um, you can obviously say that, okay, what if I would like to have the magnetic field of an entire wire, and the wire is like this. Well, what you have to do, you have to integrate this along the lengths of this wire and obviously all is changing here obviously this sign will be changing because you have a different direction of ds all the time so if you have a point p somewhere here and ds here well this is one angle if ds is here it's another angle so it's a whole different ball game and much more difficult so if you will integrate this along the wire line, whatever the mathematical representation of this curve is. So you have to do integral uh, along the curve, which is more difficult. So here we stop. That's exactly the form which uh, I wanted to, to use for uh, this law of um, BU sub R. And uh, as a very practical implementation of that law, we have come up with the magnitude, the, the, the magnitude of the vector of intensity in the middle, in the center of electric current loop. Okay, that's it. I do suggest you to go to the website, unizor.com. If you will choose Physics 14, 14's course, then it will go to um, electromagnetism, and uh, then you will find the magnetic magnetism of electric current and it's one of those lectures uh, current in the loop where you can find the lecture itself the video and the textual representation basically 
uh, which might be a little bit be better than whatever I'm talking right now. Um, and uh, yes, I do recommend you to take the whole course, the, the whole course uh, of um, of physics for teens. So that's it for today. Thank you very much, and good luck.